Hello everyone and Happy New Year! Ooh, it's 2016 and it's been a really long time since I filmed the video. I apologize for that. This past fall was very hectic with my speaking uh, and training sessions which left me not inspired to do a YouTube video. But today I'm inspired and the reason why is because yesterday I was scrolling through my YouTube channel and I happened upon the comment section and for me I have to approve my comments on YouTube because there's only so many times that you can have to just go through and find those terrible messages of you're gonna go to hell you know and all that stuff so I like to approve them so that those type of messages I can just block and delete and not have other people see the negative energy that is the internet alright so yesterday as I was scrolling through I noticed that there were some people that were commenting on a video I did on painless intramuscular injections and they were freaking out from my video saying, oh my gosh, you didn't swab your leg before you injected. Oh my gosh, you didn't aspirate your needle. Oh my gosh, you didn't use gloves. Oh my gosh, you touched the site after you injected. You're gonna cause infection. Ah! No, no people, no, it's okay. All right, I'm doing this video today to talk about what we find for evidence-based best practices when doing intramuscular injections. And these also can be related to subcutaneous injections as well, all right? What I was taught 11 years ago when I began injecting myself is very different from what we're seeing for best practices today. Things change, and so I wanna be here to help because many medical providers may not be aware of the changes, or again, we're taught something, we think that's the way you're supposed to do it, but we're finding that there's new and better ways to do things. So the first one is, looking at swabbing your, your uh, injection site before doing an injection, all right, with a 70% alcohol-based swab. I was taught before injecting to take one swab, rub the top of your testosterone lid to sterilize it, all right, which I still do, and then take another swab and swab the area where you're injecting. And for me, I do this on the outer quadrant of the outer part of my thigh, all right. Many research studies are finding that, one, to have a minor impact on sterilization of the skin, you'd have to rub that site for 30 seconds and then let it dry for 30 seconds. How many of us do that? Probably not many, all right? I can say I, I will swab it and then I go. Second, they found that in many studies, there was no increased risk for infection when you did not swab a site versus when you did swab a site, okay? Even the UK has changed their policies for now recommending not swabbing the site because they just don't see that it changes any risk for infection, okay? Does that mean that you shouldn't do it if you want to? No, if you want to, go right on ahead. But the risk of infection is low, very low, if you don't swab. Now, having said that, it is important to wash your hands, make sure those are clean, and also to have clean skin. You know, if you're out working on a car or out rolling around in the mud, I don't recommend then going in and doing an injection with those sites without cleaning it, all right? Have good hygiene before doing an injection. But if you don't have a swab that day, I wouldn't really worry about it, okay? Next is aspirating the needle. I was taught you should aspirate the needle to see if there's any chance that you're hitting a non-subcutaneous blood vessel, all right? So you pull back on the plunger, see if there's blood in there, and then you can inject. Well, recommendations have changed with aspiration, and it's no longer recommended to aspirate the needle. One, not aspirating will decrease the amount of time that that needle's in your skin. It decreases the amount of pain because you're not jostling it around, and it increases moving the medication through into your muscle, okay? If you're a person that still does a dorsal gluteal injection, which is actually no longer recommended, I'll get to that in a second, but dorsal gluteal is in the upper quadrant of your, of your uh, gluteal muscle, then they do recommend doing aspiration. But again, now best practice is saying don't do dorsal gluteal injections, all right, intermuscular injections, for a couple reasons. Well, three. One, your sciatic nerve runs back there, so the risk of hitting that is high. Two, you do have non subcutaneous blood vessels back there, so the risk for hitting that is higher. And three, the likelihood of you actually getting into a muscle is lower when doing these injections because there's more fat in that area. So you may more, be more likely doing a subcutaneous injection than doing an intramuscular injection, all right? So now they've moved it over to uh, the ventroluteal side, which I'm not gonna get into that right now, uh, instead of doing the dorsal side, okay? Next then, someone was speaking about me not wearing gloves. Again, if you wash your hands and you have a clean site, 
the risk of infection is low. I've been doing this for over 11 years and never once have I had an infection. 11 years injecting every 10 days because good hygiene is all you need when doing injections on yourself. Now, if you're a healthcare worker or you're doing an injection with someone else and there's a risk of cross having blood contamination, then you may look at gloves, but if you're just doing it yourself, you will be fine, okay? Um, those are the little things that I noticed that people are freaking out about, and I hope that this information is helpful for you. I will, at the end of this video, put up some links to references and resources on these best practices. Uh, and again, maybe things will change, techniques and information will change again in the future. And if that's the case, I will do new videos because I'm all about staying on top of the best information possible. You're very interested in this, aren't you? Yes. So I hope this is helpful. Um, and carry on with doing your injections, having proper hygiene, um, and taking care of yourself. Again, Happy New Year.